Hey everybody, it's Audrey and now it's game time. So pay attention to the screen and let's get ready to have some fun.
The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 15, verses 21 through 32. When Jesus wanted to share something important, he often told a story to explain what he meant. Now one day the religious leaders were grumbling because Jesus chose to bring in outcasts and people who did things wrong. He hangs out with sinners and even like eats with them. Jesus knew their hearts. These men thought they were better than everyone else. So he told them the story of a man and his two sons. Now the youngest son asked for his share of his father's money and he took off. He spent his money on parties and all other stuff. But then the money ran out and he ended up at a miserable job feeding pigs while he himself starved. Desperate, the young son returned home, planning on begging for mercy and working as a servant. Instead, his father welcomed him with open arms and even planned a party for his lost son in his honor. Ultimately, it seemed like a happy ending, but Jesus wasn't finished with the story yet. The older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. If Jesus were to tell that story to us today, it might sound something like this. The older brother, let's call him Will. He spent the entire day working hard, perhaps plowing up the packed dirt on a brand new field. Come on, Bessie, just one more row. <sighs> Gotta finish before the light goes. As the sun slipped behind the hill, Will finished breaking the dirt on his last long row. I just need some water and a quiet meal and bed. Will trudged slowly back to the house and left Bessie in the barn with a bag of oats. If my slacker brother hadn't run off, I wouldn't have to work so hard. As Will neared the house, he was surprised to see the lights blazing from every window. What is going on? Will stopped, trying to make sense of all the activity and the music. Then the back door opened. One of the servants stepped outside to throw out a bowl of scrap. And she turned to go back inside. Wait. The servant paused. What's happening? It's just the party for your brother. The what for my what? You haven't heard? Your brother showed up this afternoon. Your dad had the fattest calf killed and roasted to celebrate. He is so thankful Jake's safe. A party? My dad is throwing a party? I'll let the family know you're back. What? No, no, I am not coming in. The servant wrinkled her nose. Whew. You want someone to run you a bath first? Leave me alone. The servant hurried back inside Will paced as his exhaustion vanished and anger coursed through his veins. I work all day, every day. Has dad ever thrown a party for me? Will stalked back and forth, fuming as the back door opened up again. His father hurried out. Will, here you are. Well, look at that. You decided to remember I exist. Your brother is back. He's okay. Well, that is just fantastic. We're all celebrating, but it's not complete without you. Come on inside. Will turned and looked directly at his father, eyes blazing. All these years, I've worked nonstop for you. I've done every single thing you ask, and you never even given me a goat to have a party with my friends. You never said you wanted. This son of yours runs away with your money and wastes it like a fool. Then he shows up and you roast a fatted calf and throw a giant shindig. Will's father sighed, took a deep breath, and looked Will directly in the face. My son, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours, but we had to celebrate and be glad. 
This brother of yours was dead for all we knew. And now he's alive again. He was lost and now he is found. <sighs> Look, I'm real tired. I plowed the entire North Field. Well, thank you. I think I'll just go to bed. Won't you come into the party? Just for a few minutes? Will hesitated. He could see the people through the window, dancing, eating, full of joy. The light and the music called them. Please, Will. We don't know if the older brother ever listened to his father. We don't know if he ever forgave his younger brother. We don't know if he chose to go and enjoy the party. But what we do know is that if he stayed outside, he missed out on many good things. Hey friends, so that is where Jesus ended the story. He didn't say if the older son listened to his father and chose to forgive his brother. The problem with choosing not to forgive is that we miss out on all the good things that Jesus is doing in our lives and in the lives of people around us. Here's the bottom line. When you don't forgive, you miss out. It can be tough to forgive because it seems unfair, but all of us need forgiveness. When you forgive, it's an amazing way to treat others the way you want to be treated. God wants us to experience the joy of forgiveness and be happy for others who are forgiven too. Until next time, we will see you later. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love the fact that we get to worship together. But guess what? We have many more opportunities for us to hang out, worship together, and learn together. Continue to check us out on our website and through social media for future opportunities. Until then, we'll see you later.